Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Belt Last Factor. My name is Hatsus and we are back with uh, Purple Signs. What else could it be? Uh, last time we uh, placed some beacons, added some modules, and this uh, probably was uh, other work that we did in, uh, in the past has actually helped quite a bit to boost the production of, of purple signs. Um, if we look what we had not even an hour ago, we had less high peaks and we had less frequent peaks. So what we want to see is probably we cannot really do about this low plateau here but maybe we can add auto peaks um, and the way to do that i would imagine is adding one or two more trains and as we can see um, we have a waiting bay here Maybe we should also have a, a waiting bay for uh, for purple science delivery. So let's see. Yellow signs. Purple science pickup. Blue signs pickup. Military signs. So let's make this one waiting and we can fix the typo here waiting purple science delivery and i do not fix the naming on the other train stations because uh, fixing oh here it's it's correct but here, that would mean I have to fix it on the three trains as well. So, then let's actually add that waiting station to the schedules of our two existing trains. Um, waiting purple signs delivery. We squeeze that in here. And then this one also wants to have a waiting purple signs delivery. Waiting purple signs delivery right there. Nice. Then, yeah, I do have two more or materials for two more trains in my pocket so the way i found is the most convenient way to set up new trains is finding a fueling station placing the train stand because then they automatically get fueled um and then we copy this schedule on here and placing down new trains here is especially helpful if you basically don't have any any coal to spare to to fuel the trains so now the big question is i would assume with one additional train um, we can at least at the moment deliver more frequently but at some point um, we will stall because we are not producing enough idle rails 
uh, productivity one modules or furnaces. My bet is on the furnaces because uh, in the past uh, that was already the bottleneck. That time it was due to, uh, to steel, which we fixed by adding uh, another steel set up down here. And by the looks of it, uh, we have two three steel stations there. These ones are occupied. So at least on the, on the steel front, we are good. We do have one station here that can receive a train for uh, the electric furnace uh, delivery. We have one train sitting here. Oh, and apparently enough material for another train. So that's good. Um, and if we have to pimp this, we probably need to add more supply trains here. That's my guess. But we will see. Uh, so as always with these improvements, you do something uh, then you have to wait a bit of time uh, to see what the effect is of what you did. Was it the right thing? Um, or was it the wrong thing? Can happen. Uh, so that you can then determine the next action. And that's exactly what we will do now. And something interesting has happened now with two trains uh, sitting here or three trains delivering. Um, actually, the third train is at the... Uh, uh, there, there it is, at the waiting bay to come in. But these two trains are just sitting here trying to unload the, the rails and they are doing that um, now here um, we finally filled back up um, but i'm thinking maybe we can do that a bit differently because we see rails we need the most of for the purple signs but for whatever reasons um, we have rails backed up considerably. So what if we say empty cargo, uh, time passed. We will make that two minutes. And then the inactivity we set down to five seconds. So just in case uh, the everything is unloaded uh, and rails are backed up, but so that we don't wait the, the two minutes, but as soon as we uh, cannot unload uh, rails for five seconds, uh, we would uh, go there. So need to do that for all of those we have the, the time passed and here the five seconds and then that was the first train that we did so this one should be the one we still need to do two minutes here move that up and five seconds there if we look at the at the production uh, i mean for for 10 minutes we cannot really really see that um, it does not look all that much different we still have to have the two peaks um, we are maybe five science packs uh, higher than when we started this episode. 
but I think uh, it's also important that we don't have trains sitting here at the unloading station if they cannot unload all the needed uh, ingredients because they would unload something but then our our factory cannot actually uh, fully run because of missing ingredients so it's probably better they come in here they unload um, for a reasonable amount of time and then uh, disappear again making room for the next train so with this change we will have to wait again and see what it does I have been observing this and especially this view where we can see the, the times going up. This goes up constantly and this resets. And we can see it often resets in the, in the first half, so in under three seconds. So. I think if we set this to three seconds, that should help a bit. Uh, we might even decide to uh, to lower that further to uh, to two seconds, because if we are basing basically unloading uh, the uh, the rail stair. Um, that's just a bit of, of waiting time and that's especially bad if we have two trains sitting here but one other train waiting uh, with, with all the materials. Then another thing that I have been wondering is... Um, Do we have the right heavy heavy train set up the trains the delivery trains with with the right amount of goods that that we need? Uh, we need a ratio of thirty one one. So I think we have three thousand rails and then uh, 100 so if we uh, uh, strike out two zeros of these numbers we have 30 one one so, so the ratio there is correct um, and i would assume that the trains actually pick up that amount but that also means uh, the electric furnaces and the productivity modules are unloaded way faster than the, the rails. Um, do we have... this one so let's see yeah that looked like uh, had the right amount of uh, furnaces and uh, productivity modules in it and looking here We can see, I mean, at this point, we have one station free where a train could come in. So I think if we lower, lower this value to two seconds, we should also add one additional train because 
lowering that value basically means the train leaves sooner but that does not really help us when we then have no train that can take its place um, it's a bit of a of a balancing act between uh, having trains come in unloading and trains sitting there and unloading just the material that we have uh, backlogged anyway so i think uh, let's turn this down to two uh, on all the trains and then I can set up a force train and just copy that most perfect schedule uh, onto onto the new train and I still do have the material for for one train and Another thing we did a while back was we optimized the schedules for the for the train stops. Um, and what we did there um was before train fueling um or was it after yeah after train fueling having a waiting stop so that we don't have trains uh, sitting at the fueling station uh, because their destination is not ready to receive them and thereby clogging up the train fueling station which then means other trains are waiting somewhere um, where they are not supposed to do or they could do better things all right then you know the drill we will wait and see what we uh, get out of this I have been looking at this picture for a while now and what I see is quite satisfying because basically we have the trains all moving. So far we don't have any lack of uh, uh, rails, uh, electric furnaces or productivity module uh, for the supply. So basically either the trains are always loading or most of the time they are on the move to the next next station what i also noticed uh, down here is with the schedule as we have it most often we only have one station um, occupied by a train um, which means we could even add one more train. Um, but let's have actually a look at how our production looks. We are up at uh, 125. So basically that's two signs per second. The number we wanted to reach uh, however i'm not sure if this number um, can be sustained over the long run y you can see uh, we are plateauing or we seem to be plateauing here at a, a higher base level than than we did before but now we are uh, looking at it over one hour we are at uh, 
hundred. Uh, if you look at 10 hours, you can see they really, really ramped up. But we, we still need to keep an eye on that one. But I think with purple signs, we are almost there. We just have to ensure, yes, this, uh, this 120 purple signs uh, per minute um, is not a fluke uh, and is sustainable but we will have a look into that in the next episode for now that's all hope you enjoyed it and tune in next time when we have a look at sustainability for purple signs but also all the other signs because it's no good if we have only 120 purple signs and uh, other signs like behind but we will see so until then goodbye